Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, I'm going over the best PlayStation 2 emulator on PC, PC SX2. Let's get started. So I did a video on this very emulator just a few years ago. Now, just a few days ago, PC SX2 released a brand new version of the emulator. So I figured it's probably a good time to update the video. I do want to start out by saying the performance of this emulator will vary from computer to computer. If you are running an outdated system, you may struggle to run PlayStation 2 games. Here are my system specs just for reference. To get started, head over to PC SX2. 2.net. I will leave a link to this in the description below. From there, head over to the download tab and download it for the system of your choice. For this video, I will be installing it on Windows, so I'm going to click the Windows button here, and then I want to click on the PC SX2 1.6.0 standalone installer. This is the file that I need from this website. Opening the installer, you have two options here. I recommend selecting normal installation. Opening PCSX2 for the first time, there are two incredibly helpful links on this page. The first one is the configuration guide. I do recommend checking it out. There is a ton of good information here. Secondly, there is a README and FAQ with more great information. Both of these links will be incredibly helpful, especially if you're having trouble setting things up. As soon as you click next, you will be greeted with a ton of different options. Try not to be overwhelmed here because there really isn't a whole lot you can actually do. A lot of these drop downs are kind of just locked in. There's only one option to choose from. So really I recommend at this point just hit next. As soon as you hit next you'll be greeted with this screen here. This screen says select a BIOS ROM. You will have to provide your own BIOS or BIOS depending on how you want to pronounce it. This is not included in the package. Now to get a PS2 BIOS, you will have to use your existing PS2. For reference as to what a BIOS looks like, I will leave a link to this wiki in the description below, but there is a really good link here on what to exactly look for. Alternatively, you could just enter PS2 BIOS into Google and do a little bit of research here. Once you've placed your BIOS files in the appropriate folder, just click refresh list. It should pop up on the list here and then click finish. Now that PC SX2 is up and running, the first thing I'm going to do is going to go into emulation settings. From here, I want to select the speed hacks tab and then select this option here. Now, right now I am running an eight core CPU. So it says it's a good speed up, high compatibility may cause hanging recommended if three plus cores. So I have eight cores, so I am going to select this. If you don't have three or more cores, don't select this option. And at this time, this is the only thing I am changing in this menu. Now, if for some reason you run into GS loading issues, it may say GS plugin issue, it may say some sort of GS issue, don't worry, you can go into the config menu here, go into the plugin slash BIOS selector, and then just change the setting here. So there are three different GS settings. If the first one doesn't work for you, you can try the second one. If the second one doesn't work for you, you can try the third one. Hopefully at least one of them works. For most people, the default one that is selected at the beginning of setup should be good enough. Next up, if you are running into graphical issues, want to improve graphics, or want to tinker with things, go into the configuration menu, go to video GS, and then go into plugin settings. This menu here will greatly change how each game performs on your computer. For the first menu option here, the renderer, OpenGL hardware is selected by default. This option here, I highly recommend playing around with and seeing what works best on your system. Different systems may work better on Direct3D11 hardware, for example. So really play around with this option, try it out. Don't worry about breaking PCSX2, you're not going to. If a game doesn't play well, just change it back to where it was. This is an option where I would recommend changing it up tinkering around with and seeing what works best for you. It will vary on a system to system basis. The next item on the menu that I would recommend checking out is the internal resolution. Here you're going to have to play around as well to see what works best on your system. But this is where you can really make those PS2 games shine. You can crank it up to 4K to 5K even if you want to see the games at an incredibly good resolution. 
it will require a lot more processing power, so that is just a heads up. You can definitely play around here though and see what works best for you. Lastly, on this menu, you can play around with the anisotropic filtering. So this will also make your game look a little more pretty. You can crank it up all the way to 16 times, but again, it will vary performance wise from PC to PC. So you can definitely play around with this one. These three options that I just went over are probably the only three that I would recommend changing at a very basic level. If you're having audio issues or want to configure your audio, maybe the audio doesn't sound just right, go into the configuration menu, go into the audio menu here, and then go into plugin settings. You can play around in here to try the different settings out to see what works best for you. I find the default settings are usually pretty good, but for example, if you do have some audio slowdowns or audio issues, you can, for example, just easily disable effects processing. It will make the game sound considerably worse, but will also help speed things up. If you want to configure your controller, go into the configuration menu, go into controllers, and then click plugin settings. From here, you can click pad one and map your controller manually. To load a game up, go into CDVD, go into the ISO selector, and then click browse. From here, you want to select your ISO file for your PS2 game. Once you have selected your ISO file, your game, go into CDVD again, go to ISO selector and double check to make sure it is showing up. This is a quick way to switch between ISOs as well, switch between games when you want to play different games. Then go to your system, go to boot ISO full, and you're on your way. So this is Capcom versus SNK2 up and running at full speed and using native PS2 graphics. I didn't change anything on that GS plugin settings page, but if I want to increase the graphics, if you remember when I said change it from native PS2, you can crank it all the way up to four or 5K. I'm going to go back into that menu here put it into 2K and show you the difference. To bump up the graphics just a little bit is pretty simple and straightforward. I'm going to go into config here, go into video GS, go to plugin settings, and then change this from native PS2 and I'll bump it right up to 2K here, not going to 4K just at this time. I'm gonna click OK here, go back into system and then boot. This is Capcom versus SNK2 running at native PS2 graphics. This is Capcom versus SNK2 running at 2K graphics. And just for fun, this is Capcom vs. SNK2 running at 4K graphics with anisotropic filtering cranked up to 16 times. This is Capcom vs. SNK2 running with the Direct3D11 hardware plugin instead of the OpenGL, using the exact same 4K settings and 16 times anisotropic filtering. If you want to know how well the game is running on your PC, it's a really easy and quick check. All you have to do is check the top bar of the game itself. So it says right now the game is running at 100% speed at about 60 frames a second, which is full speed for the game. What you might see on this top bar if you do crank up the graphics a little bit are frames dropping during key moments in the game. For example, if you go into a large open field and then see the frame rate drop, you may need to lower the graphical settings in order to get the full speed of the game. But anyways, that is all I have for today. PC SX2 is a great emulator. It's fairly simple, fairly straightforward, and hopefully now you have it up and running on your computer. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.